What on earth is that? It's a journey into comics network production! Tell me something, my friend. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? What? I always ask that of all my prey. I just like the sound of it. Brought to you by the power of the Journey Into Comics Network. This is the Journey Into Comics Podcast. The show that's 100% dedicated to everything nerd. With your hosts, the Podfather, Nate Phillips, the Podmaster, Brandon Stone, and the Journey Into Comics Network stepdad, Tyler McLaughlin. Time to make the chibi chunks. Hey! Excellent! Finally. What did you do? <laughs> and here we go. Can somebody tell me what kind of a world we live in where a man dressed up as a bat gets all of my press? This town needs an enema. What's up, true believers? Welcome back to another episode of Journey into Comics. Today it's Journey into Comics 329, and I am your host, Nate. Joining me today, back on the show, finally, welcome back yet again. Brando, how's it going, man? It's going all right, man. It's going all right. Uh, Yeah, last week, um, it's funny, you you mentioned today that you kind of had a had a had like a migraine thing going on last week. That's exactly what I've had, and unfortunately, I've I've had it like twice in a week now. And the last time I had it was way back in September, and it was debilitating. Thankfully, the last two times it hasn't been like where I've had a had to, like a whole full day recovery, but it has affected um, my ability to do anything for a little while. It's like. Like literally, totally. When I told you, hey, dude, having a rough day, I had to like close the blinds or like the curtains in the living room and like shut it. And been there, fam. Oh man. And just uh, kind of like uh, take some. I got some like uh, like Excedrin type deal, and uh, that you know, after a while, it helps. It does take a while for that to really kick in and make me like, all right, I'm kind of back to normal now. But I didn't have any of that back in uh, September, and I got it at work. And it, it hit me early on at work, and of course we have nothing but like uh, those um, lights. The um, not the LEDs, but the fluorescent fluorescent lights. We have some LEDs, which is even worse. I can't. But even with the fluorescent, I couldn't look up. Like I, I it was like I had to. There's only so much of the level that I could look up, and I was working with a dude. Most of the time, he's not too bad. I could keep him on task, but he literally he never stops talking, and. It was like one of those things where I wanted them to keep talking, but at the same time, it was like, <sighs> just keep talking. It's a long ass quarter, dude. We got to get through it, and I need something to keep my mind on. But really, you're talking too loud right now. <laughs> but anyways, I'm doing okay. You're existing too loud. Yes, uh, I, I hope that you do start to, start to feel a little bit better as we've uh, kind of waited to start almost an hour before we logged on just to help make sure that you are well and ready to go i am rocking my new cup my nice. wife got me this cup oh it got it's definitely some mass effect going on i'm commander shepherd and this is my favorite cup on the citadel and the way that the design uh, the way that she did it it looks kind of like a uh, galaxy clouds and shit like that so does she design that shit herself okay my wife yeah. No, and hell no. She had a uh, she had a like a a, a friend or person shit she gets online. The company is, that she has is she uh, it says Carpenter Wife. So uh she, you know, she does commissions and stuff like that. This one uh, she was able to get her to do a style that she doesn't do very often because of the design. So, that was cool. Um uh, it, I, Pretty fucking unique, man. I love it. Yeah, she showed me a TikTok of her making uh, the design on the cup, and it, it it involves her putting the putting the thing on there and 
hitting it repeatedly with a blow dryer to get it to move in a certain way. So it definitely, my cup was definitely involved. It was a labor of love, and I really appreciate it because it's an awesome cup. Um, mine, my, my my old game addict's cup, which I still have, the epoxy is a bit chipped on the bottom. So if I keep using it uh, rigorously, it could it's actually gonna gonna start chipping away. So yeah, we don't want that. Well, we're we're shouting out Carpenter Wife while we're here. I'm gonna throw out a different shout out. And this is a crossover shout out I've been meaning to do for a few weeks, but we have an avid viewer who watches our show and probably listens to our show every week. And a lot of times I get feedback from him. I don't always get to message him back, but he is one of our closest friends, somebody who's from the old Draxis days, the one and only Jason Long. Really? Doc Holiday. He's he's been doing videos on YouTube, man, working on his bike and shit. Yeah, they're dude, really this cool. Is awesome. They're really like I do encourage people to check it out because it is a really fun like look in. And Jason's such a unique soul, man. He's so funny and and just it, his energy just existing in the world in this crazy world that we live in right now. You know, dude, that's um, awesome that he listens. I know that he, you know, uh, way back in the day around episode one hundred, he kind of shouted us out where he was having like an argument with a friend about like uh, I can't remember who it was that like Green Arrow and Batman or something like that. It was, yeah, it was definitely Green Arrow and Batman. Okay, see, like I, I'm, I, I literally, I was throwing the arrow, just trying to see if I could hit, hit the dartboard. Uh, but no, that's awesome that he listens, dude. I mean, I miss you. I hope you're doing well. Um, and I, I have watched some of those videos of you working on the bike. It's really cool that you're doing some of that. And uh, yeah, man, uh, keep in touch, for, you know, for sure. Like, it'd be cool to like sit down and talk to you sometime here on the show, just to chit chat. Yes, I. I'm all, all about that. That would be absolutely fucking amazing. But let's kick it off, Brando. Last by myself, riffing on the Wonder Woman goodness. And spoiler alert, happy 2021. We kicked 2020's ass. We're here. We made it. Yeah. We aren't in the worst year anymore. We could be in still a bad year, but we don't know yet because it's, it's only like two days in. No, we definitely limped into 2021. Uh, <laughs> we limped in, and we're here. I just saw today that McFoley has COVID. Um, we covered it on the show. Yeah, ridiculous. And, uh, I also saw that, um, oh, Larry King hospitalized with COVID. Wow. Today. Yeah, so, you know, he's That's up for there. him because he's frail. Yeah, dude, he's Larry up there King in age. A frail old dude. So, you know, 2021 might be starting early. Uh, of course, they uh, we you know we we ended pretty harsh with 2020. I mean, 2020 is pretty bad all around. But I mean, it, it, the thing that's really bad is now it's coming up in people's memories of right at the beginning of 2020. Oh God, yeah, and everything seems so hopeful. <laughs> but like, no, I saw somebody posted, and even my wife had is like, like. When you're all excited for 2020, then then you realize that 17, 20, 18, 20, 19, 20 uh, were all pandemic years. Whoa. Ah, shit. We definitely jinked ourselves there. But, but hopefully we're, I mean, we're still, no, no, we're still in the thick of it. But hopefully the light at the end of the tunnel is not a freight train coming our way. And here soon. You're hey, gonna, that's a reference. Yeah, here soon you're going to be able to hear rank them all. Is going to be going live here soon. Um, the exact date, I don't know yet. We're, we're, we're still working on it to get the show live. However, the first, like, 13 episodes are done and in the bag, and we're basically ready to start launching them once we get everything set up logistically. Uh, so we are now starting to roll that out. And once as soon as we find out, we're going to let you know. It's via our social media. Hit it up on Twitter at GIC Network. And uh, we're going to have a Twitter for Rank Em All and all that stuff as well. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned, and, of course, here live on the show at the very beginning of one of the new episodes. We'll let you know as soon as we have the exact details. Definitely, man. I'm really excited for uh, for us to get those out finally. We've been sitting on them for a time. We've been building it up for mm -hmm. a time, mm -hmm. and now it's time to finally release. I'm like a rabid dog. I can't wait to watch them because I haven't seen any of the footage back. I just heard it now, which is great. And it sounds great, and I'm really, really looking forward to getting other people to listen to the show and see what they think because it's totally – this is us, man. It's us in a really cool way, and I, and I love how much of us comes through in the episode. 
it's very real it's very personal you know metallica is more than just a band to us which i think is a great reason to do what we did with them well exactly well exactly and when we started the whole project it kind of started off as like metallica influenced hence the name rank them all right uh but literally metallica is just a jumping off point you know it's easy for you and me to sit down and talk metallica we got a couple guys and and nick maxson and, and and you know and dick tyner also part of the network to be able to do that with us and, and go down that journey and listen to every single album and rank every single song and and go through that whole rigmarole and to, to come up with a pattern to come up with an algorithm that works to make you know just to, to easily put in the 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 data once you give me a score it i i have it set up to where each each individual person gets an album rank so i if my album was a nine and yours was a seven dicks was a six and nicks was a four well it's going to average up all of our ranks and that's going to be the master rank for the podcast and uh i mean as of right now we're just music based because it's easy to start there because you know we can dive down to a bunch of different bands that doesn't mean that down the line we couldn't uh, do other stuff, rank all the chicken sandwiches, rank all the the uh, Marvel movies again, rank all the DC movies, rank all the Rocky movies, you know, rank all the Schwarzenegger films, you know, <laughs> just something silly. Uh, Ooh, yeah, you know, it just so like this has an ability uh, to you know to reach out and just as I said, Metallica is just kind of a jumping off point, it's something easy that we could easily you know sit down and do and talk about. But it was also awesome. To sit down and uh, now that you know, I I've sent you the first episode that has been privately uploaded. It, it, you know, be, you know, it's not live yet. But to go back and listen, I'm not to the, sharing the link, you fox. No, not yet, not yet, guys. Just be patient. But to go back and listen to that now, that was so long ago that we that we were like, it's almost like you're hearing it brand new, and that like you don't even remember anything that you said. Fact. So. <laughs> That's interesting. One hundred percent. And I'm, you know, I'm excited. I'm super excited to get it out as well. And that's coming to you very, very, very shortly. Uh, you know, we're looking forward into the new year. Uh, we're looking forward to some cool stuff coming out. Uh, we were, you know, we just got Wonder Woman. We're going to talk a little bit about that because you talked about that last week, and I've watched it. So we're going to talk about that. Of course, we have the Snyder Cut coming out in March. We have uh, Black Widow finally coming out. Uh, in May, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the how they release it. If it's is it going to be a, a mixture, or is it going to be like what they did with Mulan, or or what? Uh, Wonder Woman crossed a hundred million uh, at the, at the box office uh, today, so still making money. Yeah, it's making some money, and it's you know, and they're uh, they they have to be selling subscriptions. I did see that you won't you, if you you still you have until the twenty fifth of January to join HBO Max and watch the movie. But it doesn't work if you have the free month trial or or two week trial, whatever it is. It doesn't work on a trial. You have to pay for it. So take that for what it is. They're making money there too. Uh, and that's the and that's what's interesting because uh, it, when you, when you when you look into like Turner or uh, WB Warner Brothers, whatever company, whatever you want to call it, there's different divisions. And going even back from our wrestling days. Uh, and and knowing what we know from from some, from some other podcasts from people who are in the wrestling business in WCW, which was a Turner property, you know, it's weird how they do profits and share. Like WCW as a wrestling company did not get any money from pay per view revenue. That went elsewhere, or also to home video because that home video was done by Turner Home Video. So all the money they made off of the WCW VHS tapes never went back to WCW proper. It went back. It went to Turner Home Video. Isn't that weird? Jeez. That is weird. So it's just like they were doomed to fail. Kind of. Kind of. Why uh, didn't you make any money? Well, why did you not pay us any fucking money? Well, and see, in, for a long time, it wasn't 100% about making money. It was about driving ratings to TBS. Like, it, that's all it was. And uh, at, like at some point it changed. They merged with Time Warner, AOL, and uh, basically they saw that the wrestling audience wasn't watching the other stuff on TNT and vice versa. And uh, that flavor didn't vibe with what AOL wanted to do. And they said, "We now have the power to get rid of you." And that that was it. But 
it makes me wonder if if that company is still laid out the same jigsaw way or is it a little bit more streamlined because the way that they were doing with announcing all of these theatrical releases going to, right to HBO Max is seen and it caught a lot of producers and directors and companies per you know production companies off guard and some of them are pretty pissed off and so like how much say do they have in it it, 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 it it's, it's so weird like well and then WB or Warner Brothers uh are they owned by um uh AT&T now as a parent I think company war, it's war, it's Warner Media now right it's could, not because Warner like merged into AT and T to create Warner Media. Okay, so I in other that. words, basically what you have, you have a parent company who has all these other smaller companies, and they say we have all this stuff, and we ha- can make the direct call of what to do with it to maximize our profits overall. Even if it means like, hey, you, you're gonna go out here and do this thing. Well, we're gonna pop this over here and put this over here. And if you don't like it, well, that's, I mean, you signed a contract with us. It's like, suck it, Blue. Oh, man. It, it's, I can understand some of the frustrations, though, because it wasn't the deal that they signed. It's almost like, I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. It's, this deal's True. getting worse all the time. <laughs> and that's how we got Christopher oh. Nolan making an MCU movie. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that would be um I guess my gears turning. Shit. I don't know, man. Where uh where do you actually want to start? Do we want to talk about Wonder Woman? Yeah, let's start. You've already kind of talked about it. Um I don't have a lot to say about it. Um I watched it. I enjoyed it. Sure. I enjoyed it for what it is. Uh I don't think it's better than the first movie. That's hard to do cuz the first movie caught me off guard with how good it was. Like it was sure. a pretty damn good movie. This movie has a different flavor sure. to it. You know, it has a different flavor. So, like, from the get-go, like, I just kind of just sat back and didn't dissect it too hard. It's all right. It It's not worst part of MCU. It's also not the best part of MCU. It's not even the best part of DC. Uh, it's somewhere in the middle. It's all right, man. Like, like the one motif I kept coming back to was... Even though there's some plot holes, even though there, like, there was some stuff that just didn't explain, it reminded me of like 80s era comic books, which is the storytelling from that era. And I, uh, both the pluses and negatives with that. Uh, I felt like it, it, like it hit the 80s mo- motif pretty good without hitting us too hard on the head with the music. And also, I liked uh, Steve. Steve was back uh, for whatever reason. Um uh, it was really weird how they did it, but but it made sense for this story. And what I liked is their chemistry together on screen with Chris Pine and and Gal Gadot. It it was like they were having a lot of fun, and, and you can tell they were just having fun. Whereas the first movie was more about showing the connection between these two characters and how they kind of fall for each other, and then ultimately his spoilers sacrifice. And now he is back in, into the picture, and you know from the get go, from the get go. You don't have to be like a, a Pulitzer Prize winning author to predict he ain't lasting the rest of this movie. Yeah, it won't it won't happen. But what it does is that she never got to say goodbye. It kind of gives her that kind of closure with that, and you know him being okay with it, being like, "Hey, you know, I went away before. It's just I'm not supposed to be here." You know, I actually did like that, and a lot of that part did get to me. Uh, Pedro Pascal killed it. I loved him in this movie. I thought he was awesome. Uh, Super villain. He did great. I thought he was, yeah, I, I thought he was fantastic. Uh, every time that he was, like, involved, I absolutely loved every, um, er, almost every scene he was in was great. And I, and it, I, I, what I liked is that his character was pretty human uh, and, and into, he's a kind of a complete lie and a joke and a failure, and he all he wants to do is be a success for his son. Uh you know, and uh, what's the one thing that he loses in order to to, to uh, you know to, to taste this power that he gets? That's that his son. His son, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know he he uh, gets uh, shoved into a dark, dark place, and that was so well well done. That's like kind of like honestly, 
that's why I really come back to how much I like this movie. Because the MacGuffin of him wishing to be the Dreamstone is like, ah, I can get as many wishes as I fucking want because the Dreamstone takes. He mm -hmm. knew right away what he was getting into. And it's very cleverly done. Uh, we talked about this off air, but we haven't talked about it here. There has been some fan backlash about this film having some kind of pro-rape culture vibe. And I can't say they're wrong, but also what dude is going to be upset if they woke up next to Gal Gadot? I mean, really? Okay. Um, so I get what you're talking about. Uh, I that, that part of it never really clicked with me when I watched the movie. Um, Same. Because they don't actually show anything happening. It's implied, uh, which you can, like, they they did. Uh, be, well, because okay, so spoilers for this movie slightly, because we already said that he, that Steve is back. He's not back completely. He's he's back in somebody else's body. In other words, everybody else sees some other guy. She only sees Steve because she can tell it's him, and that it, it's it's like a little movie magicry where they just have Chris Pine there playing the role of him. I mean, she she is a goddess. Yeah, I know, but I mean. They did some trickery where it was like, like one. Uh, there was a part where they where she went to this party. That that was a part of the movie that kind of made me scratch my head because she was also at the party that Cheetah went to. Uh, and met up with Pedro Pascal, and left, and, and he that's how he ended up getting his hands on the stone. She's at this party just kind of like walking around, and this random guy's like walks up to her, starts talking to her. She's like, "I don't know you," and then he says something to her. And hands her a watch. She's like, "Don't why, why why are you saying that to me? You don't know me." He's like, "Surprise! I'm back. I don't know how. I just woke up in this dude's body." And um, the she's ad, like, "Oh shit! That wish is legit." <laughs> well, and she never said it out loud, which makes me wonder if that's why how he didn't get his body back or whatever. Uh, she kind of just she held it. Uh, uh, no, I shouldn't. So like, she wanted it enough. She willed it into existence, I guess. But no, they go back to uh, her place. Was, was it her place or his place? Um, I think they go back to. Oh, because he had a. Well, had... they go back to his place one time because he starts remarking on the guy's like wardrobe, taste, and he's like, "Oh, this is weird." And they go through all this stuff and and whatnot. Yeah. But they, it, it shows the next morning they're laying in bed together, and he is awake. And he's drinking coffee and eating pop tarts, and he just this is great. So, like, yes, that 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 scene is implied that they probably did something in the middle of the night. Um, they bumped uglies under the fireworks. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like as you said, I don't necessarily disagree with the fact when like when it's brought up saying, "Hey, this isn't cool to promote this." But I don't really feel like the movie goes out of its way to say, hey, 100%. It didn't show them rolling around in the covers or anything like that. You could literally watch the movie and, and like, they could have just fallen asleep. I mean, maybe I'm, like... Just as easily. I mean, maybe I'm trying to be, like, too, uh, too like too wondrous. Maybe she wanted to wait for marriage. I don't know. <laughs> do you think Wonder Woman, like, in, in, the, in Themyscira, do you think they have the dopest weed? Because they're goddesses. And then, like, do you think maybe that she smoked him out and that's why he got up the next morning was, like, jamming <laughs> the coffee and stuff? <laughs> he was just trying to get himself back to square one. He's like, I found Pop-Tarts and coffee. This is great. This definitely <laughs> cures my, my eye. Woke up with the damn munchies. Yep. Um, Weed so strong it knocked him out and he woke up with the munchies. Yeah. Overall, without getting too far, too much far into it, I thought it was an all right movie. Uh, we got some pretty cool scenes that gave us some comic book stuff. Uh, the invisible jets in the movie. Um, a few other things. She doesn't use the sword and shield in this one. Uh, she uses the throwing the like the 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 headband type deal. Wow. And the lasso of truth. And a lot of lasso. And dude, there's. She's swinging from lightning bolts. That was dope as hell. 
Like I thought that was that cool. was a really cool scene, for um, sure. Overall, it's pretty it's pretty good. I liked it. I li- uh, Cheetah was probably the most downer part of it because I just felt like her character. I get it, but I also kind of felt like we've seen it before, which is okay. When you have all the superhero movies that we've had over the last twenty years, yeah. Guess what? We we we're we're going to have seen something like this before. In fact, in fact, it's not that far of a stretch in any Wonder Woman film to say, "Hey, we we we've already seen this kind of stuff before in a Thor movie." So, a lot of yeah, because there's similarities within the characters. There, they're both one of the strongest members in that universe. They're both absolutely like god or demigods or whatever, and and just like superhuman and all this stuff. So like there are similarities there, and that's okay. I can shut that off if I'm gonna watch a movie. Uh, you know, I'm I can shut that part of me off and not be too too critical because there's flaws in the movie, and and then there absolutely are. I mean, there were flaws in Batman v Superman. We've talked about that endlessly here on the podcast. But it's still a fun. Till the cows come home. Yeah, yeah. Those cows done went home, and they are tired of being <laughs> drugged back out in the pasture. Of oh my god, they said the three letters again. <sighs> Moo. V and the V and the S. No. Together. Uh, but you know, it's it's cool. I liked it. It's all right. You know, uh, it, it's getting some mixed reviews online. Some people say they hate it. Thought it really sucked. I didn't think it sucked. I thought I thought it was all right. It, like a lot of cool action scenes. There's just some nitty gritty in there. If you want me to be hypercritical and tear it apart and point out every single flaw in the movie, I can do that. But there's also some of the best comic book movies I've ever seen. I could do that with. And if you wanted, like, absolutely, at the, you know, I can do that. But I enjoyed it. That's all I got to say. Hell yeah, man. Uh, I will say that. It was a fun flick. Like I, I'm still, I'm still satisfied with my opinion of it, uh, and I don't think I, it's changed that much since I recorded the last episode. But uh, you had some good, good, good. Yes, yes, yes. I don't think I'm gonna go back to rewatch it anytime soon. And the only time that I probably will rewatch it is if I'm ever getting in a weird mood to watch all the DC stuff again. So, that being said, uh, if if Wonder Woman. For the DC is a nine nine five that good. I would say this was probably a good step down, maybe even a step and a half to a seven five. Uh, it, but but also just r- yeah, remember, I can gel with that. Remember, if it's a seven, that's above average. It, you know, it, it's fun, you know. Like like we gave BBS a seven or an eight, depending on mood or whatever. So, yeah, it's fun, even with its flaws. It's fun. Yeah, I like the flick for sure. Uh, But, you know, last time we were together, you said you had some rumor mill stuff that was uh, bomb dropping, stopping goodies. And I want to just kind of check the boxes of some of these rumors we've got going on because the casting rumor mill for Amazing Spider-Man has gotten so ridiculous I I can't even keep up with it. I heard a rumor the other day about another character that possibly is signed to do a cameo and I'm just like, what the fuck? I can't even believe that's possible. Well, the rumors... Since the last episode I was on, where we were going to talk about it, but we literally just gushed on Mandalorian for an hour and a half. So it, there was this, this part of, a, of the episode would have been really not fitting with what we were talking about. It has, to totally. do with, it has to do with the Spider-Man movies. And literally, since that time period, there's been more rumors stacked on top of it, stacked on top of it, stacked on top of it, and then stacked on top of that. So let's roll back to the very beginning. They're they're filming the third Spider Man movie right now that's gonna be inserted with the MCU and possibly shared with Sony Spider Man verse, right? We know Tom Holland's in it. We know his buddy Ned's in it. We know uh, Zendaya's in it. 
Uh, Happy's probably going to be in it. And we know Jamie Foxx is in it. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, and, and we know Benedict Cumberbatch is in it. So, yep. so, so some weird stuff. Now the rumor mill. Andy Garfield's in it. Amazing Spider-Man. Kirsten Dunst in it. Uh, Sam Raimi Spider-Man. Alfred Molina, Doctor Octopus, Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. Second one specifically. Tobey Maguire. Yeah. All right. So what's going on here? Are there any more? I just saw another one today. Yeah. That the fourth Spider-Man movie. Let's see if it's the same one. You first. The fourth Spider-Man movie will have Doc Ock, Alfred Molina Doc Ock. In other words, is he going to survive this movie? Is he going to stick around? How's this going to work? And Norman Osborn. Willem Dafoe, Norman Osborn. What is going on here? However, again, that's 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 all, man, that's more rumors. But we can surely see because the other rumor was uh, Charlie Cox, Daredevil, making an appearance in Spider Man Three. That's another rumor that got stacked Possible. on to the other you know, to their rumors, and I mean that's that that's a, something that I said, fan casting, do it right now. You you know Peter Parker needs a lawyer. Um, Coming into this movie, we know in WandaVision, things get messed up completely. In the, correct me if I'm wrong, but Spider-Man's going to be before Doctor Strange. Yeah, it is. Okay, so what they're doing, for, and this is what I, for another rumor, WandaVision, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange are going to be a trilogy of movies that are have its own little pocket continuity that only goes really with those. So uh, so instead of doing they're going to go for the bigger <laughs> picture because they because the MCU are going to but they're going to those to have con- to have like some connectivity they're going to have the story go directly and have those movies come off of WandaVision into Spider-Man into Strange. And I assume that that the whole thing gets wrapped up into Doctor Strange movie which then whatever ramifications at the end of that could have leading effects into whatever's going forward. So do you want to unpack some of that before we move on to other rumors? Uh, yeah. So, so where do you start? Okay. Charlie Cox. Yes. I'm here. Okay. So Charlie Cox. Yes. I'm here for it. Uh, I heard the Norman Osborn Willem return rumor. I love it. Especially if we get an MCU looking version and not a Power Ranger villain. I want the Power Ranger villain. Though. I want that one, damn it. Uh, I mean, it's fun and all, but I would really love to see him like the Green Goblin. Like, you know, pale, fleshy, green skin, you know, in the fucking iron cheek boots, essentially. <laughs> the little curly you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, on the glider with his tighties on, you know, like I would love to see that because I think there's a place for that, especially with we've seen them do villains from Spider-Man's history so brilliantly in the MCU. Why not take a second crack at Willem Dafoe when he was great? Why not take a second crack at Alfred Molina because he's great? Possibly having the other Spider-Mans is fucking incredible. Incredible Andy Garfield, that's cool. Having Kirsten Dunst is cool. Having Toby Maguire is interesting and cool. He's in a different place in his in his career, obviously. Now, what story are they telling? What story could they tell? Are these brief cameos? Do they have lasting effects in the movie? Are these pocket universes that Strange is gonna drop us in where they film new sequences? of those old stories and they are in their old costumes and it is just like this beautiful homage callback thing who knows the possibilities are beyond endless right now because the whole multiverse thing they're trying to set up it actually hurts my already aching brain to think about yeah um 
I wouldn't be surprised if they were more glorified cameos, uh, because the obviously the movie is Tom Holland's movie, and not Andy Garfield or Tobey Maguire's movie. However, I would like to have them a little, just give them a little bit of screen time to kind of say, kind of a, a fare thee well. Uh, you know, hey dude, like this was fun. It was cool to come back as a little cameo, you know, and uh, wrap a bow on this uh, cool thing that I did 15, 10 years ago or whatever. So. Uh, that that's gonna be cool, but there's but there's another rumor. There's another rumor, Nate. That oh, rumor shit. is okay. So so what we have, we have the this will be a Spider-Man trilogy: Homecoming, Far From Home, and then whatever this is called, right? Uh, and then of course he did appearances in Civil War, Infinity War, and, and Endgame. So that's six movies he's been in, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. The rumor is is that Sony and Disney have been back at the discussion table because Sony wants to get Tom Holland for six more movies solo movies damn now now Disney would like to get access to Tom for crossover films as well as television now that the Disney show stuff is kind of ramping up there, there's there's a possibility of some small crossover stuff with She-Hulk, or maybe a maybe a Daredevil a series could be a limited series could be coming where they bring back Charlie Cox for that. Uh, who knows? The possibilities are endless. But r- but remember, six solo movies. That means s- total of nine movies. We only got three Iron Man movies for for Tony Stark. And yet he felt like he was around forever in all these different movies. With Spider-Man, the rumor is they want to have a high school trilogy, which is what we're about ready to wrap up, a college yep. trilogy, and then an adult trilogy. And that his interactions with these other Spider-Men are going to be a big part of him going forward. And that at least part of the next second trilogy, he would be wearing the symbiote costume. And is it going to be? Ooh. Directly, Ooh. the same venom as uh, Tom Hardy. Is it going to be a piece of him, to where Tom Holland or gets his venom? Uh, it, you know, Tom Hardy gets his venom, and somehow eventually he goes back and becomes whole again. And then he's like, "Hey, surprise! We can now stick to walls without just being like a piece of goop that just kind of falsely crawls down, like you throw one of those ball of goops at the wall." Um, yeah, yeah. And then I can. We have webbings. It's just cool. And then also we can we we can go fuck with him and he can't sense us coming. <laughs> Man, there's so many possibilities. At, uh, again, I it's, don't know. It's, it's all rumors. I think that if if we get a college trilogy, I think that's awesome to do the dark thing and to shift the focus and to make him more violent, more brooding, less dorky and happy, and t- kind of take away from him. He's already lost some. Make him keep losing more. Well, you know, and there's that rumor. There's that rumor about. So give him this suit. Sorry to interrupt you, Nate. I'm sorry. We had a little connection. Thing oh, good, good, good. But there's that rumor. Uh, circling the internet again, again. This is all rumors. We don't know. We could go into Spider-Man three, and none of this is going to happen. <laughs> we, we could go into Spider-Man three, and Tom Holland dies. True. You know, Tom Holland's the Peter Parker is dead in the first ten minutes, and then to- Toby Maguire is like, "Hey, I'm back," and then we're like, "What? No way!" And and they're actually like, "Guess what? We're bringing in Miles Morales. We're bringing in M- Miguel O'Hara, and we're bringing in Ben Riley, which is just Tom Holland again, but not Peter Parker." <laughs> That's so smart. I but, love it. But okay, so like, it's it's all rumor and innuendo. Uh, I don't want to be on here saying that this is awesome. It's going to happen. No, we don't know what's going to happen. So some of this stuff sounds really cool. Some of it sounds far-fetched. I personally don't believe they're going to do three trilogies with Tom Holland. I think Tom Holland's going to be like, this has been fun, guys. But I've literally done seven movies with you guys after this trilogy and some more Avengers stuff. Maybe we'll start wrapping it up and we can pass the baton to another kid. Uh, Because I just filmed... Uh, Uncharted for you guys too and there's some other stuff I want to do as an actor other than playing Spider-Man even though that's a dream role to have man once you play that role it's like you have to as an actor you have to be keep um, having 
reasons to come back to the character. What new can you bring to it? And you can do a lot yeah. with it, but it's also like, you know, it, it, it is, it's like the Michael Keaton effect where when he, he didn't really want to come back for Batman Returns because he's like, what more can we do with the character? And his character in that movie was not a focus. And they... True. That, that's that's one of the reasons why they added such a big character arc in, in the third movie was because they want he was critical of saying there's nothing for Bruce to do, you know there's nothing in internal for him, and so they made that story in that movie and then he ended up not doing it anyway because uh, they uh, they got rid of Burton he wouldn't he wasn't going to come back if Burton wasn't involved, so with pretty cut and dry with Holland he he apparently he's good to go for as long as he wants to be. Well, he wanted to be Spider-Man, and he even as a kid said he wanted to play Spider-Man. So it's like, when does he want to give up the dream job that he has? Right. And see, all right, if he is 100%, yes, I'm on board to play Spider-Man for as long as you want me to, right? I'll do it forever, sure. you know? If sure. I'm Sony, even though that's printing money for me, I want to have something on my uh, of my own that I don't have to share with Marvel. You know, because that's going to make us even more money that I don't have to profit share or, or just give Disney a cut or whatever, you know. And that's where, you know, they, they've done the Venom stuff. They're doing a second Venom movie. They're doing Morbius. If I were them, I would take this multiverse opportunity to start up a Miles, to start up a Miguel O'Hara, get some other Spider-Man stories because there's other Spider-Man out there that you can have a Spider-Man movie without Peter Parker. Literally, we are on our third iteration on screen of Peter Parker. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. Tom Holland kills it. But it's time. We can do, you know, you know, and they got the animated Miles, so maybe we don't do a live-action Miles. Maybe we do the Miguel, where we do a complete futuristic, uh, different look, that Batman Beyond cyberpunk type deal. Spider-Man Noir and Nick Cage actually plays Spider-Man Noir. We could do that. We could do that. <laughs> we could, or um, I'll be about it. Or like you know, we could do the Ben Riley thing, where like we clone Tom Holland, but it's he, but he actually does end up looking different. Now he, he's a he's a fraternal clone. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Fraternal clones of the police. I don't know about that, but uh, no, man, the rumor mills are flying. I do have a question just for my own sake and brain meets. What's our time stamp right now? What are we looking at? 42. Okay. Well, yeah. man, I, I, what, do we have more rumors? Ah, no, man, that's it. That's it. That is it. I feel like this is a short oh boy, but I feel like I'm doing a disservice if I sit here and still suffer through this. It sounds like to me that you're trying so hard not to fall asleep. I'm hurting, man. And it, it, my brain is on fire. The problem, and I think I don't know if I said this off air or not, but like at work, we're staring at the screen all day. Mm -hmm. And I forgot to put that blue light filter on and it just killed me. And now, so I've got the recording light over here and it's killing me. So I just think, like you did last week, I need to go sequester in a dark room. Well, there you go. Uh, no, dude, it's been like you know, we touched on the two things that were big. There's not much uh, going around right now as far as like top big rumors. Uh, I saw something I thought was going to be something where it's like Spider-Man comes pro for, you know, full circle in this movie. Literally, all it was was Tom Holland be, being like, uh, we're filming in Atlanta and we're filming on the same stage that I auditioned on. Cool. I mean, it's cool, but it's not really newsworthy. Nah, it's not. <laughs> but man, no, I, I, I'm, I'm grateful to, to be on today. I'm trying my best, guys. I'm grateful for you guys hanging in there while I'm brain scramblies and doing my fucking very best, Brando. As always, folks can check us out on all the different podcasting platforms: Apple Music, Podbean, Stitcher. Uh, Google Podcast, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, uh, CastBox, Apple Music, Amazon Music, whichever one I didn't say already, YouTube. Get us on Facebook. Watch the video live and early and share it with your friends and shit like that. That's really cool. Go to journeyintocomics.com. Get us on there so you can get all the archives, all the old shows 
1300 different shows you can check out there and go to game addicts podcast and get them on all the different podcasting platforms because brandon does his best god damn it he's trying to bring that content and give you guys the news especially in the wild world we live in right now where things are so uncertain it's it's an interesting time to say the least Mm -hmm. yeah man and uh nate thank you once again uh for sitting down today and talking some cool some cool nerd stuff uh we were going to hit on the new Spider-Man outfit uh, really we'll quick. save it. We'll save it because I don't have much to say. I don't have much to say either. Let's just talk about it. <laughs> All right. Uh, it, it, to me, it looks like one of the extra outfits in Spider-Man, like Marvel Spider-Man and PS4. It, like, it just it, it, it's, doesn't do much for me. It's a little weak. My big thing was, and I said this in the group, is I want to really – way to pass judgment until I can read what the story is surrounding it Mm -hmm. and why it looks like that and what reason it is and then say okay it looks dorky or okay it doesn't really make sense it does look very robotic and I don't really know if I understand that last time they turned a superhero into a goddamn robot was Batman and we know how much I liked that sarcasm (laughs) so uh, yeah man I'm I'm only uh, mildly interested in this Spider-Man costume, and I am interested in seeing what it actually means for the bigger picture because it doesn't give me, like, oh, my God, black suit Spider-Man, that's incre- incredible vibes, or oh, my God, it's Iron Spider, it's incredible. It was just like, oh, that's weird. Oh, Batman's not a goddamn robot with bunny ears. It's true, and neither is Spider-Man with his little beater beetle beetle ears <laughs> looks like he's wearing airpods he does he does it's bad it's like he's a cyberman from fucking doctor who but <laughs> all right bro yep. fuck i think that's probably where we should wrap this bad boy up Absolutely. man uh thank you folks for checking out this week's episode of journey to comics it's journey to comics 329 i've been nate I've been Brando. And as always, pop your caps back and fill your brains with shit. Later, guys.